What's going on, sports fans? This is Colton Chumbly here for TheOther98.com. Obviously, got SEC Media Days in full swing and, you know, officially winding down. Uh, today we had Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide really step up to the plate and steal the show. So uh, we naturally reached out to our friend Charlie Potter over at Bama247.com. Uh, Charlie, how are you doing, man? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Great, great. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you taking the time, bud. Um, well, man, uh, what do you think is uh, the overall feeling for Coach Saban and his guys after taking center stage in Georgia? Well, um, you know, obviously what everybody was going to ask about and going to write about with the quarterbacks, and uh, there wasn't much news to come from Nick Saban and the players, uh, as expected. Um, you know, Nick Saban kind of made it clear in his opening statement that you know, things are still to be determined between uh, Jalen Hurts and Tua Tonga by Um you know, he was asked a couple questions uh, later on about them, even if he expects Jalen to be on the roster for game one against Louisville on September 1st. And, uh, I think the interesting thing there, there were a couple things. One, he said he doesn't know, um, obviously, because anything can happen with these quarterbacks in this day and age when it comes to transfers and guys not winning the job. But you know, he also mentioned that uh, Jalen's on trying to graduate in December. And if that's the case with this new redshirt rule, uh, you know, he can play – and, uh, you know, four games or less, you know, have a redshirt year, uh, graduate, and just be able to transfer out wherever he wants to. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a possibility for Jalen. He's some, a guy that I think could potentially look that route. But other than that, uh, you know, there was some, some news, uh, you know, from a standpoint of, uh, you know, linebacker Keith Holcomb uh, not playing football this fall. But it was, it was kind of quiet on Alabama's part. Uh, you just kind of got the – uh, the so-so uh, run down of the roster. Uh, you know, guys are eager to get back to uh, on the field and things like that. But uh, you just had Alabama kind of stealing the show from teams like uh, Missouri, Mississippi State, and Tennessee. And um, even if no SEC media days wasn't in Birmingham, it was in Atlanta this year. Uh, you can still see how far reach that Alabama fan base has. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, man, uh, you spoke a little bit about the quarterbacks there. Uh, who do you think, you know, you see ultimately winning that starting job? I think Tua will be the quarterback. Um, I don't necessarily know if that'll be the case for game one, uh, just because Jalen is still the starter. Um, yeah, he started the national championship game. Uh, the offense wasn't able to really get moving, and that's when Tua came in the second half. Uh, but I think that um, unless something happens, if Jalen kind of falters or doesn't show any signs of progress or um, you know, ability to go through his read and build the ball down to with accuracy. Uh, and if Tua's hand is, is uh, healed up, he's able to go. Um, you know, I think that uh, Jalen is the guy that's going to go out there and maybe start. I think we'll see both quarterbacks. I don't think Alabama sticks with their two quarterback system all year long, but we've seen uh, these quarterback competitions in the past kind of drag out into the season. And uh, I just think that with the talent that Tua has, the arm strength and uh, you know, what you can do for this offense uh, through the passing game with the running backs that they have behind them, uh, this offense can be really dangerous. And uh, I think that ultimately is, is what allows him to, to win that starting job. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, well, you know, that, that kind of leads into my next question. You know, who do you think really gives them exactly what they want out of that quarterback position? You know, who do you think the offense is more geared towards? Well, I mean, the best thing about Alabama, even whenever Lane Kiffin was in town as offensive coordinator, they're going to uh, cater their offense to the players they have. And whenever you're going to see you know, Jalen Hurst on center, you're going to see a lot of RPOs, you're going to see a lot of read options, uh, things like that. They're going to utilize his uh, abilities. And obviously, he's the guy that can make plays with his legs. Uh, with Tua, uh, you can open up the play action game a little bit more and take some shots down the field. Uh, but, you know, they have some talented receivers. Uh, you know, I, I know that all three starters are gone, including Calvin Ridley. Uh, but you have the trio of, of youngsters uh, that will be back: Jerry Judy, uh, Devontae Smith, and Henry Ruggs the third. So they're able to air it out a little bit. Uh, but it, I don't, I don't think it, they look at it that way. Uh, I think Nick Saban, whenever he looks at these quarterbacks, uh, he has a few criteria that he takes uh, higher than anything else. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the player that gives him the best chance to win is high on that list. Uh, the guy also has to you know, win over his teammates, and I think most of those guys can do that with ease. I think all their teammates trust them both equally. Uh, and then, and one thing that I think keeps Jalen in this hunt more so than anything else outside of his experience 
is he doesn't turn over the football. And that's something that I think, you know, say Tua goes out there and starts game one in the hypothetical situation. He goes out there and throws a couple picks, then Jalen's going to come off the bench and, and enter the game because that's something you can't do as a big set quarterback. Uh, so it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, I don't think it is necessarily a situation where you look at uh, one guy, uh, the hitters on their offense, they're going to, you know, build the offense around what their players can do. And, and that's the case for either of these quarterbacks. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, what What do you think uh, will be the strengths of this team then? I mean, it, you know, it really, Bama always embraces that, that reload instead of rebuild kind of stage. But, you know, is there a different type of athlete that, they're, that like you said, they're going to be catering to this year, just as a football team in general? No, I mean, I think Alabama can really succeed running the football. Uh, you know, we've talked about what Tua can do uh, through the air. He has receivers that he has rapport with uh, that will be out there um, you know, on offense. But I think um, when you look at what it has back at running back with Damian Harris, uh, Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris, and Brian Robinson, uh, you know, and the offensive linemen that they can put out there, you're going to have four starters back. Uh, and guys that had a lot of experience, like Jedrick Wills and Alex Leather, where they're going to compete for starting jobs. I think that's your bread and butter right there is running the football. And that's something that we've seen in Alabama teams in the past. Uh, defensively, uh, you got to replace a lot of starters. But having guys like Ray Quan Davis, um, Isaiah Bugs, and Anthony Jennings back, those three starters on the defensive side of the ball, uh, you know, they're still going to be able to stop the run. Uh, Alabama's you know, super thin at linebacker, and it doesn't have a lot of experience. Uh, whether it be starting or uh, as reserves in the secondary, uh, you know, but if some guys that are projected to be starters step up, they're going to be fine on that side of the ball. But I think it all starts in the trenches and running the football and stopping the run for Alabama being the extremes, which really doesn't should come as a surprise to anybody. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, man, I really appreciate you taking time. I got one last question for you, and then we'll go ahead and let you go. Um, you know, just. Prediction-wise, how, how do you think the season plays out for the Tide? I mean, do you think it's a pretty realistic op- chance that they'll repeat? I mean, it's, there's a chance for it. Uh, I think Alabama has a strong shot to get it back to the playoffs for an unprecedented fifth year in a row. Um, you know, the schedule isn't the, the toughest in the country, but I do think there's some games that are set up to be a little bit maybe trap games. Um, you know, there's, there's teams out there like Missouri, I think in the Mississippi State coming off the LSU game. Uh, those are always tough. And uh, obviously, you got to end the season at Auburn. But Alabama has a chance to um, you know, run the table. Um, you know, if, if they can get the right pieces together on defense and stay healthy on that side of the football, uh, and if they can figure out this quarterback situation and, uh, and have an opportunity to uh, do the things that I think the offense is capable of, weapons they have on the outside and at running back, uh, then yeah, they have a good chance. Uh, they have a good chance. And uh, you know, again, I think it you point to that schedule not being. Uh, you know, that's strong, and uh, if they can get back to Atlanta uh, to the SEC Championship game and win that, then obviously they're going to be in the college football playoff. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, we saw that last year, so, well, that, well, that, that that's uh, that's great, man, uh, you know, once again, I really appreciate you taking time to sit down with us, I know things got pretty hectic for you out there in Georgia this week, but, you know, we really appreciate it, man, we look forward to seeing how everything unfolds in uh, Tuscaloosa this fall. No problem, man, thanks for having me. All right, thanks a lot.